long presentation actually. This was about 50 minutes. Um, but so I'm not going to show the whole thing. We only have 12 minutes. But I will present a little bit about some of our um, instrumentation and, and monitoring uh, that we do at WJE. So, can I jump to the slide? Yeah, so, so basically, like this one was talking about when to use NDE versus monitoring, but both techniques are, are really can be used to identify conditions within, within a structure. Uh, the main difference being is uh, NDE, you test the structure at a certain point of time. When you do monitoring, you have that uh, more of a time effect for your data because you collect your data over time. Even if it's short term monitoring, you still are relying on data collection for a period of time to analyze your structure. Um, so, I'm going to skip over the NDE parts of this. This is like corrosion detection and stuff. This is more of a liner thickness detection. Okay, so an instrumentation and monitoring. So there's various methods to do instrumentation. Uh, you have strains, placement tells, surface chronometer, temperature. Um, and, and then there's other methods that more for like building in type monitoring, monitoring which are pressure, relative humidity, or radiation, uh, wind speed. Then, then there's some advanced monitoring capabilities like vibration, uh, noise monitoring, acoustic emission, which is generally used to detect wire breaks and pre stressing strands or cable state bridges. Uh, and then we also have like a GPS based displacement monitoring. Uh, this is a new, newer. Uh, displacement monitoring technique, one of the main advantages for this in a field application is that usually if you're trying to measure displacement in the field, you need uh, something to react off, you need a fixed point. So let's say you're trying to measure deflection of a girder. So your, your wires for like a string potentiometer will run from your girder to the ground, uh, which is not feasible in a lot of cases. So if you have a GPS placement on that girder, and then you have a base station somewhere else, you can actually use that differential movement between the two points uh, to measure your displacement. Uh, one thing to note is GPS displacement monitoring is not, is not fast. It actually needs some time to collect the data and do the averaging uh, uh, to, to get good results and good accuracy. Um, what do you use monitoring for? Long-term monitoring, uh, load testing, uh, building envelope monitoring. Uh, so any instrumentation system in a field application contains different uh, different um, uh, sensors. So you have your sensors, cameras, whatever your instrument your structure was, uh, collect or connect everything to a data logger uh, that's usually connected to a cellular modem so this data can be transferred and you can control your system remotely. And then, then finally, you have a cloud server where you can do web viewing, and the client can also have access to this web view so they can visualize the data in real time. You can set up alarms if, if there are certain thresholds that you are looking to not exceed uh, during this, uh, this monitoring. Or for other purposes, you just collect this data and you view it and do analysis on it. So, for example, if you are uh, measuring the strains during placement of concrete to understand how concrete in a bridge deck cracks. So you, there's no threshold really for alarming, but you, you collect all this data and you view it to be able to uh, decipher this information. Um, I'm going to go to the most interesting example here. So we did this work at the Arecibo Observatory uh, before it collapsed in 2020. Uh, so, for you, for you, you who don't know, the uh, CBO Observatory, this was the largest antenna, uh, radio frequency antenna in the world for like 50 plus years. It was originally constructed as, a, as like an army facility to track missiles, basically. Uh, but once I think the Cold War was done, it was given to NASA, and they used it uh, for their research applications. The University of Central Florida was actually operating uh, this facility. So, um, in the summer of 2020, uh, one of the main strands that are um, carrying this antenna, which you can see uh, right here, uh, that's about 1,000 ton antenna, uh, uh, snapped. 
basically. And uh, you can see there are three towers that are supporting this antenna. You can see tower one, uh, two, and three. Uh, and basically, uh, each of the towers had six strands uh, to support the antenna. And then there are backstays to that goes from the other end of that tower. Uh, to the ground to counteract that, that force of the, you know, the weight of the antenna, basically. So there were seven of those. And then what happened is one of these towers on the exterior, and uh, one of the uh, towers just, just snapped. So what we did, here's a picture uh, of that snap. So this is the platform is on this side. So these are the support cables. These are the backstays. Uh, once this snapped, we we're involved in the project to basically conduct some monitoring uh, of the structure uh, to see if there is any additional movement uh, and how the stresses are basically changing uh, in the remaining uh, uh, wires here, the cable stays here. Uh, each of these things is like three and a half inches in diameter and it's supporting tremendous amount of force. And there are more, more than 200 some individual wires within each of these bundles. So that's, that's a lot of uh, uh, So we came up with a monitoring system that uh, included three gauges uh, that were, uh, were placed to basically measure the stresses as they change with, with temperature and to see if there's any additional wire breaks that are causing more forces to redistribute and any of these uh, cables are being overstressed. Uh, we also had uh, a, a wind sensor to just measure wind direction and wind speed. Uh, we had tilt meters on each of the different towers to see if there's any uh, additional tilt or, or actually, uh, like if, if tilt is tilt is usually a good indication of like major structure movement. So if, if anything is moving out of the ordinary, um, everything was placed in in uh, an environmental enclosure. Uh, Puerto Rico it is very very humid and it's very hot. So each of the boxes had like a dehumidifier and also a fan to keep all our electric equipment in okay uh, environment so it doesn't, doesn't get too hot and stop working. Uh, then we also designed an acoustic emission system uh, to measure wire breaks in the remaining wires. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't install the system. With acoustic emission, there's usually long lead times because these are produced by only like three manufacturers around the world pretty much and uh, for structure applications. And these manufacturers they usually need the time. So we were working with a manufacturer from Germany and um, they really produced the system for us pretty fast, like in, in three weeks. And we got it in the US. But once we received that, uh, another cable failure appeared. And at this point, the structure was deemed unsafe to, uh, to be working on because. To work on any of these things, you need to climb up like 400 feet uh, to, to work on the platform on the top uh, of each of these towers. Uh, so that was uh, not recommended at this point. And then after another 10 days, uh, another cable failure appeared and, and the whole structure uh, came down. Okay, so this is just uh, anatomy of the failure. Um, you can actually Go to YouTube and watch some of the videos, and you can see one of our uh, boxes with the enclosure flying in the air uh, on the side of the tower collapsed. Okay. okay. So, again, I apologize for the uh, poster I didn't uh, show today, but hopefully this was uh, an okay. okay.